morning viewers, I am G S Suresh, Professor of Civil Engineering in front of you, teaching you design of RCC structural elements. In the previous class, I had taught to you about the design and concepts of T beam, L beam and how to consider the flange section during the design. I had given you the equations for the design of the flange sections in the limit state method of design. The analysis depends on the position of the neutral axis. I have considered mainly the T beam and the flange section in case of L beams is not considered because it is subjected to torsion. So, I had taught to you about the design of the T beam. The position of the neutral axis if it lies in the flange then it is considered as a rectangular beam having a width equal to flange width and the depth of the neutral axis. It is the same design concept taught to you in rectangular section what we have earlier seen in this class. When the neutral axis lies in the web, then the more complication has been studied in our earlier classes, where the rectangular and parabolic sections are to be considered depends on the position of the slab. So, all the details I have given you in the earlier class. Then I had taught to you about the concepts of shear in the reinforced concrete structure. The shear reinforcement in the form of vertical stirrups, bent up bars or inclined stirrups or combination of all this when we should provide is when the nominal shear stress increases compared to the stress allowed in the concrete that I call it as tau C. We are referring to the code IS456. It stipulates that this quantity of vertical stirrups should have a minimum value, and I had told you what is the equation to be used. When the applied shear stress is greater than the shear stress permitted in concrete, that is tau C, we have to design the shear reinforcement. So, the capacity I had called it as VSU which is equal to 0.87 Fy into ASV into D divided by the spacing SV was the capacity. So, we were using the clause 40.4 for this from the code. Today, I will continue with the design of the shear reinforcement in RC beam. Then, I will teach you about the torsion strength of RC sections. Then I give you the concept on the development length and anchorage which is the continuation of the shear strength. So, let us have a look at how do we do the design of the beams under shear. First we have to calculate the ultimate shear force in the section due to applied force. The applied force could be on a simply supported beam or on a cantilever or could be in a continuous beam or could be a fixed beam. We calculate generally in a critical section what is this value V u. The code stipulates that for simply supported beam we have to consider a section at a distance of effective depth from the support, but however in practice we will consider at the support itself because the, this shear force will be greater at this point, but according to the code it will be lesser than what we consider in practice. The step 2 is to calculate the nominal shear stress. The nominal shear stress tau V is calculated as V u by B d. And if tau v is less than tau v max, where tau v max is given in table 20 of the code, 
then we provide the minimum reinforcement given here by this equation ASV by BSV greater than or equal to 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.87 FY. We reverse this equation and say that the spacing should not be maximum given by this equation SV for the assumed value of the diameter of the stirrup. From the structural design, we know what is the percentage of steel we have provided. So, we calculate PT as 100 AST by BD and referring to table 19, we get the permissible stress tau C that is the shear stress in concrete from this table. I hope uh, all of you are having the code which I told you long back. Whenever you attend this class, you should have IS 456 and SP 16. So, refer to this and get the value of tau C. Then we calculate what is the capacity of the concrete in this beam as the stress into area. That is stress is tau C that is permitted shear stress in concrete obtained in page 19 multiplied by the area that is the width of the section multiplied by effective depth. So, if this tau V is less than tau C, then we give the nominal shear reinforcement as I have indicated earlier. If it is greater, then we design the section for the reinforcement as per the clause 40.4. So, let us understand this concept through this problem. So, I am uh, explaining you this problem through the following data. You have to obtain the section shear strength and we have to design if required the reinforcement as per the clause IS 456. The data is the width of the section is 250 mm, effective depth is 500 mm, percentage of steel PT is 1.25 percent and the ultimate shear force is 200 kilo Newton. Adopt M20 concrete and FE415 steel. So, let us uh, look at the first step what I told you here. We need not do the calculation of VU because it is already given. If it is not given, as you can see in the next problem, we have to calculate VU. So, now I calculate directly the shear stress tau V is equal to VU by BD. VU is the ultimate shear strength or the force applied by the external force B and D. So, I have substituted here. Take care to convert the kilo Newton into Newton because finally, the stress has to be expressed in Newton per mm squared. So, I have substituted here 200 into 10 to the power of 3 to get this in Newton and divided by the width is 250 and the effective depth is 500. So, I have the shear stress, the nominal shear stress as 1.6 Newton per mm squared. Now, first let us compare whether we have to revise the section comparing this tau V with the tau C max. Come on open page 73 in the code and ref refer to table 20. There you can see for M20 concrete the tau C max is 2.8 Newton per mm squared but the nominal shear stress is only 1.6 very much less than the 2.8 Newton per mm squared hence the section need not be revised. In case this is more than 2.8 then you require to either change B or D generally we keep the B same and we increase the effective depth. So, in this case now for P t equal to 1.25 referring to same page 73, the table 19, you get the permissible stress under ultimate condition as tau C equal to 0.67 Newton per mm squared. I hope all of you are referring to the table and now compare this 
tau c with tau v. Tau v is greater than that is the actual nominal shear stress is greater than tau c hence we require to design the shear reinforcement. In the other case if it was less we could have provided the nominal shear stirrups. So, now we design this in the next step. So, let us try to calculate first what is the shear capacity of the concrete which is equal to tau c into B d, where tau c is the stress we have obtained from table 19 that is 0 0.67. I multiplied by 250 width multiplied by the effective depth 500 divided by 1000 because if you multiply these 3 you get the force in Newton, but I have obtained the ultimate strength or the ultimate shear uh, in kilo Newton. So, I convert this Newton to kilo Newton by dividing this 1000. So, I get a value 83.75 kilo Newton. If you have calculator you can check this calculation. So, what is the applied V u? The applied V u as you can see here in the previous slide it is 200, but the capacity of the concrete is only 83.75. Then who has to take care of the difference? The difference is 116.25 which you can see here. That will be taken care by the stirrups. We can assume certain diameter of the stirrup and as I told in the previous class this will be provided in the form of a loop or a hoop reinforcement. That means, it will be having two legs and this is I am assuming it to be 10 mm diameter two legged. When there are two legs we have to calculate the area of the two leg as area of one bar multiplied by 2 because it has got two leg. So, this works out to be 157.00 mm squared. So, let us substitute in the strength I told you we will interchange V u s and S v in the previous equation I had told V u s is equal to 0.87 F i A s v d by S v. So, I have taken S v to the left hand side and V u s to the right hand side. So, now I substitute 0.87 F y this is to take care of our strength in considering the load factor. Then A s v is just now we have calculated that is 157 and the effective depth is 500 divided by V u s just now we have it is calculated 116.25 into 10 to the power of 3. So, the calculation leads to 243.8 mm per every center to center. So, we cannot provide the stirrups or measure in the field exactly 243.8 mm. So, we have to round off this. Generally, it is rounded off to the multiples of 10. So, I round this off to 240 and before I decide to be 240, I check the maximum spacing. There are three stipulations given in the code. One is the minimum reinforcement requirement that is 0.87 F y A S V by 0.4 B. In the code if you see it gives you A S V is equal to or should be greater than 0.4 B into S v divided by 0.87 F y. So, I have reversed this and obtained S v. Substituting I get 566 that is the first check. The second check is 0.75 times effective depth which comes to 375 mm and the third check is 300 mm. So, the S v max is 300 and I find that the spacing I calculated is less than the maximum allowed. So, I decide upon providing two leg of 10 mm dia bars at 240 center to center. So, that was a very simple calculation. Let us see how we can make 
little complication in this problem by considering these data in the second problem. It is a T beam, whether it is a T beam or a rectangular beam, the procedure of design is same because the shear is taken care by the web of the T beam. So, I will show you in the next uh, slide the section which becomes for the purpose of the shear only rectangular beam. The given data is the flange width is 2000 mm, thickness of the flange or the slab is 150 mm, the overall depth is 750 mm and effective cover is 50 mm. There are 4 bars of 25 mm dia in the tension zone as longitudinal steel. The width of the section is 300 mm. The beam is simply supported over a span of 6 meters and it is subjected to a UDL of 50 kilo Newton per meter throughout. We use M20 concrete and FE 415 steel. So, here you can see the width of the flange is 200 and the overall depth is 750. I have deducted the effective cover 50 mm. I got the effective depth as 700 mm. The flange width is 150. The steel which I have shown is AST which is having 4 bars of 25 mm. So, let us start the first calculation in the step 1 to calculate the nominal shear stress. From the simply supported beam, we can have a look at uh, the board where I show you how this is calculated as the shear force. This is the simply supported beam of span 6 meters. You can check this in the data. It is subjected to a UDL which is W equal to 50 kilo Newton per meter. So, it is very well known from your strength of materials that the reaction V A is W L by 2 and the reaction here is also W L by 2. So, this is the maximum shear. The code specify that if you take at the effective depth this gets reduced, but however, we can do the problem with v, u, v is equal to W L by 2. W is 50, L is 6 meters divided by 2. So, that is what I have shown here in this slide. 50 into 6 by 2 gives you 150 kilo Newton and the ultimate shear force should be obtained by multiplying the V by load factor 1.5. So, I got this V u as 225 kilo Newton. So, as in the previous problem, let us try to do the nominal shear stress calculation as V u by B. Instead of B, I take B w here. This B w is the width of the web. This is the width of the web and effective depth is 750 minus 50 which is 700. So, I get 1.07 Newton per mm squared. And I also calculate the area of steel provided at the tension zone as 4 times the area of 1 bar. The area of 1 bar is 491 mm squared. Earlier class I had told you to memorize for different diameter bar the areas. I had given you a table if you remember. So, this is 1964 is the total area we have provided. Then if you calculate the percentage of steel as 100 AST by BD, 100 into 1964 is the area of steel divided by B is 300, effective depth is 700, I get a percentage of steel as 0.93. From table 20 and page 73, you get the value for 0.75 and 1. So, you have to interpolate for P t equal to 0.93 and get the value of tau c as 0.6 from table 19 and fr from table 20 
you get tau c max as 2.8. So, this is safe, it is very less. So, we need not change the value of the depth. Now, if you consider the tau c and tau v, tau v is greater than tau c. So, that means to say we need to provide the reinforcement for shear in the form of stirrups. So, to calculate the stirrup I require what is the capacity of concrete to take care of the shear. I calculate this capacity by considering the stress in concrete multiplied by the area. This leads to 126 kilo Newton where I have shown you the calculation. Here this 1000 is to convert the Newton into kilo Newton. So, we have V C U as 126 kilo Newton and we have to design the reinforcement by deducting the V U from V U and also with V C U that is 126 we get a capacity of 99 kilo Newton to be taken care by the stirrups. I assume MM dia just to show you the difference in the previous problem I had taken 10 mm now I am taking 8. So, it is the decision of the designer to decide what diameter is required. In most of the construction where the shear force is not high we take 8 mm diameter stirrups because you do not get lesser diameter in CTD bars MT bars. So, I calculate 2 times the area of 1 bar which is ASV equal to 100 mm square. So, I go back to the same equation which I showed you in the previous problem SV that is 0.87 FY ASV into D by VUS. So, take care of substituting VUS in Newton 99 into 10 to the power of 3. So, always you should have the same length units and force units when you are substituting in an equation like this. I get S V as 255.28. So, let me check for the maximum space. The first one is from the minimum steel reinforcement requirement which is 0.87 F Y A S V by 0.4 B which gives me the maximum spacing as 300.87 and 0.75 times d gives 525 and the maximum spacing is 300 again as in the previous problem the maximum spacing is 300. So, I consider the S V which I have designed and give 2 legged ATR at 250 instead of 255. Then this 255 center to center need not be given throughout the length of the beam. As you can see in this diagram, we can curtail at a place where the shear is having equal to, you can see the shear force diagram. In this shear force diagram, this is 225 at the extreme ends and is 0 at mid span. So, what we have to do is from center at a distance x where the V C U is the capacity of the shear, find out that in this diagram and from the support to this dotted line you provide at a distance of 250 center to center and then for a length of 2 x, x on either side you provide the nominal shear reinforcement at a spacing of 300 mm center to center. So, use this similar triangle property, you have a triangle of length equal to 3 meters and V U is 225. And you have another small triangle with a length equal to x and the height of the triangle as V C U. So, compare the two triangles properties and that gives 225 is the shear force at the support divided by the half the span equal to 126 is the shear strength of the concrete divided by x. So, at a distance of 1.68 say 1.6 meters from the center you have to curtail or in other words 1.4 meters from the support till that distance you provide the stirrups at 240 center to center or 
had decided as 250 center to center. So, this we are providing as I have shown here up to a distance of 1.4 meter and then in the middle portion 2 times x that is 2 times x is 3.2 meters length I provide 2 leg at 300 center to center. So, that is about the shear what we have seen. The shear force is always noticed in almost all the beams whether it is a determinate or indeterminate beam. Now, we are moving on to the next topic in our chapter unit 2 that is considering the torsion. If you recall your strength of materials we had defined the torsion as the moment acting parallel to or about the axis passing through the section. Suppose I consider this as a circular section this is the chalk piece this is having a round section and the axis is passing through if I make a moment about the axis that is called as twisting moment. So, this moment is making the section to distort if the section is rectangle it will become oblique. We had taught to you as shaft in strength of materials the shaft subjected to torsion T where does these uh, torsion is occurring in practice. If you have seen uh, somewhere in your house the corner of a building is having a window on either side perpendicular to each other then we require to provide a corner lintel opening. Then we have a curved beam there also you observe the torsion then the balcony beams supporting the slab I will show you the sketch in the next slide. L beams that is the flange beams at the ends of a slab is L beam I told you in the previous class about this. If you have a spiral staircase there also you observe this torsion and any non rectangular 3 D structural elements like trapezium or triangular sections they are subjected to 3 D structures subjected to torsion. We classify the torsion as equilibrium torsion as observed in simply supported beam and secondary torsion called as the compatibility torsion. The compatibility torsion I will explain you now before that the equilibrium torsion should always be designed whereas, the compatibility torsion can be managed in the construction process as you can see here. We have a three dimension structure here one main frame is supporting the another beam like this. So, this junction produces a torsion on this beam the moment on this beam produces torsion onto this beam. So, this is called as compatibility torsion. Whereas, in L beam like this, this is called as equilibrium torsion. Here, because of the slab tries to bend and it produces torsion. And you can see a curved beam as provided in water tanks, they are subjected to torsion because of change in the direction of the axis. Also, in the edge beams like this, which forms like a L beam, there also you find the torsion. Let us try to understand the concept of the torsion by first recalling our formula in the torsion chapter in strength of materials. You can see here I have given this equation is well known to you torque divided by polar moment of inertia equal to rigidity modulus g and the rotation theta divided by the length equal to stress F s divided by r is the radius of curvature. So, this equation is called as torsion equation this is very much resembling on the flexural stress equation which we taught to you in 
strength of materials. What is the effect of the torsion on any body? It produces shear and this in turn produces tensile stress. While teaching you on shear, I told you how the principal tensile stress is developed. On an element, we have axial force and the shear stress which in turn produces principal tensile stress. If this principal tensile stress having a magnitude greater than the modulus of rupture which is the permissible stress in concrete as tension, tension stress the concrete cracks. So, it is like this if you have a bar like this and I try to twist like what you do to twist the cloth to dry take out the water similar to that here you can see the stresses are produced along the periphery of the section and it cracks here this is the crack portion of the beam a rectangular beam. So, a ordinary concrete beam if it does not have the reinforcement it cracks spirally it winds around the beam. So, this has to be taken care by providing suitable reinforcement. So, the reinforcement required for taking care of torsion is done by providing both stirrups as well as longitudinal reinforcement. We use a analogy called as space stress analogy in which a beam is considered like a truss having concrete as compression member, steel as the tension member in a truss. This was developed by two well known civil engineers Lampert and Collins. Based on their investigation the equations on designing the reinforcement has been developed. Never the beams are subjected to only torsion which is called as pure torsion. Always the torsion is combined with bending moment and shear force. So, we never consider the beams subjected to pure torsion we always consider the combined forces. For the design we consider the equivalent bending moment and equivalent shear force as given in IS 456 which I have given you here. The equivalent bending moment is considered as ultimate bending moment due to bending force plus equivalent moment due to torsion. If you add these together we get a bending moment this is a combination of the moment in z axis and moment about the x axis. The definition of these terminology is given here mu is external bending moment which is ultimate bending moment mt is a equivalent torsion moment which is expressed according to the code as tu into 1 plus d by b where d is the overall depth b is the width divided by 1.7. This is the equation we use to calculate m t. One thing we have to remember this m e 1 is considered like a bending moment only and we design the reinforcement and the section using the rectangular ultimate flexure theory which I taught you earlier. If you recall mu lim you see the board for the equation it is mu lim is written as q lim into b d square where q lim is the moment resistance factor at limit state b is the width and d is the effective depth. So, considering this we calculate the effective depth required 
and also for this we calculate the steel from the equation which was developed earlier for you. The code stipulates that if the value of m t is very high that is the torsional moment is very high. How do you say you compare m t and m u if m t exceeds the value of m u then you have to provide reinforcement in the compression zone also for m e 2 this is similar to what we did in doubly reinforced section that is this is equal to m 2 m u 2 I used to refer refer to m u 2 which is obtained as m t minus m u calculate a s c and a s t using steel beam theory which I taught you earlier. Then to design for the shear we consider the shear force as equivalent shear force equal to V u plus 1.6 times T u by B. V u is due to the flexure and shear, T u is due to torsion and now you calculate as I did earlier in this class the nominal shear stress as V e by B d. Tau v should not exceed tau c max because the limitation is given in the code that the shear stress should not exceed this value as given in table 20 page 73 of the code. If it exceeds revise the section. If the value of tau v is greater than the permissible stress tau c given in page 73 table 19 just now we considered earlier for shear then the transverse reinforcement is required otherwise provide nominal shear reinforcement. If the design is required follow this equation this is available in page 74 of the code A S V is equal to T u into S V divided by B 1 D 1 multiplied by 0.87 fy in the denominator this is to take care of the torsion plus v u into s v to take care of shear divided by 2.5 d 1 into 0.87 fy. What is this b 1 d 1 is shown in the next page here. If you take the center to center of extreme reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement this width is B 1 and if you take between the center to center of the depth from compression zone to tension zone it is D 1. Now only I explain you if you consider the transverse reinforcement and if you take between the extreme ends of the transverse reinforcement that distance is X 1 and vertically it is y 1. So, let us be very clear about b 1 and x 1. b 1 is center to center distance, x 1 is the extreme end distance to the transverse reinforcement. So, with the help of a problem I will show you. Now, we will come back to the equation. Here it says that this value whatever you have obtained should not be less than this equation tau v minus tau c is the difference in the stress multiplied by b into s v divided by 0.87 f y. So, we have to take care of this. So, how do we do it? We will see through the problem. Before that some salient features given in the code we shall see. The transverse reinforcement for torsion should be provided in the form of a rectangular closed stirrups and this should be wound round the bars and the spacing shall not exceed the least of the following x 1 which I just showed you as the extreme edge width. The number 2 is x 1 plus y 1 divided by 4 and 300 mm. So, here it is given x 1 and y 1 are short and long dimensions of the stirrup that is the width and the depth. 
The longitudinal reinforcement shall be placed as a close as close as possible to the corners. That means, we have to wound round the longitudinal bars in tension and compression zone. As I told you, I will illustrate these equations through the problem given here. We shall design a rectangular reinforced concrete beam to carry a factor load that is the bending moment as 200 kilo Newton meter and factor shear force of 120 kilo Newton and factor torsional, torsional moment of 75 kilo Newton meter. We shall use M20 concrete and Fe415 steel as we did earlier. So, I will go th through this very quickly. We have shortage of time. We, I have to cover one more topic. So, this we will see the moment is 200, torsion is 75 and the shear is 120. So, let us assume the ratio of the depth to width as 2 that is the depth is twice the width because we do not know the section. We shall assume this B later. Then I have obtained the M T from this equation which I gave you earlier and this leads to 132.35 kilo Newton meter. Here M T is less than M U, M U is 200, M T I got 132. So, I need not provide separate additional compression reinforcement. M E 1 is the equivalent bending moment is M T plus M U which leads to 332.35 kilo Newton meter by adding these two. Considering the width as 350 mm, the effective depth under limit state is called as D balance. So, the one which I have shown you on the board the equation rearranging this is the equation we get for effective depth and you get this as 586.56. Assume a cover of 50 and let us assume the overall depth to be 700. The design is always done as a trial and error. So, the effective depth provided is 650 mm which is greater than the required effective depth for limit state. I calculate the steel required by this equation which I derived to you in the earlier class as 50 F C K by F Y into 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4.6 Me 1 divided by F C K B D squared which you can see on the slide. So, this gives a percentage of 0 0.73 which is less than the limiting percentage of steel 0 0.96 given in S P 16. So, I have explained you about this in the rectangular beam design. So, we calculate A S T as 100 A S T by B D A as the P T. So, rearranging I get P T as 0.73 multiplied by B into D into 100 gives me the value of 1660. Let me assume diameter of bar to be 25. So, this total area is divided by one bar area which gives the number as 3.38 say 4. So, provide 4 bars of 25 mm in the tension zone as longitudinal bar and 2 12 mm as hanger bar. So, let us check the shear. The equivalent shear is V u plus 1.6 T u by B which is giving me 462 kilo Newton. So, the nominal shear stress is V e by B d is 2.03 less than the tau c max given in table 20. From table 19 for P t equal to 0 0.86 I get 0.58 Newton per mm squared as the tau c value. So, I design the spacing by assuming 12 mm dia bar which gives me A s v s 2 times the area of 1 bar which is 226. So, I substitute in this equation and I get the spacing as shown here. So, I get the spacing as 152 mm center to center. So, let me provide 2 legged at 150 center to center which is less than the maximum value which is shown here. So, I have given you the detailing here 4 bars and 2 bars on the top the width shown 
where this is the B1 center to center, D1 is center to center. So, the overall depth does not exceed 450, then we need not worry. Now, it is exceeding 450 because the overall depth is 700. We have to provide as per the codal requirement 0.1 percent of the web area for the web to take care of the additional stresses. This I calculate 0 0.1 percent as 227 and I provide 2 bars of 16 mm dia which comes to 400 mm squared as side face reinforcement. I have shown only the web because the flange is ineffective here. So, after we have understood what is torsion, the last concept before I conclude today in the second unit is the concept of development length. I told in the beginning that there should be a good bond between the concrete and steel to act as one material that is composite material. So, the perfect bond can be obtained if you have got ribs on the top of this reinforcement which happens in TMT bars or CTD bars. The bond is measured as a shear stress which is called as bond stress. The local bond stress varies along the member with the variation of the bending moment. So, this average value is obtained from the code and we calculate what is called as development length. I will show you what is this development length on the board. You can see if I embed, suppose take a block of concrete and embed a steel here and try to pull it out after 28 days, obtain a force of tension T in the bar and this is all concrete and here you observe when you pull it out, frictional stresses are developed along the periphery and this length is called as the embedded length LD that is the development length. Development length is nothing but the embedded length in the concrete. So, this can be obtained by considering the frictional stresses which is considered as the shear stress in concrete or in the bar. So, for compression member also we require to do this, it is called LD. The deformed bars are always superior to the mild steel bar because mild steel bar is always having a tendency to slip because of a smooth surface. In class 26.2 of the code, it stipulates what should be the bond stress and the development length. This we obtain from the table which I have shown you here. This is given in 26.2.1.1 in the code and for M20 concrete this is 1.2 Newton per mm square. If it is a deformed bar increase this is for mild steel, so increase it by 60 percent and for bars in compression further you increase it by 25 percent. If it is mild steel just 1.2 into 1.25, if it is deformed bars 1.2 into 1.6 into 1.25 is the stress to be taken in compression. This diagram shows a beam subjected to UDL where the bar is embedded and suppose I get from the design about 6 bars as the reinforcement at mid span. So, all the 6 bars need not be taken. I can curtail certain bar for how many, how much length? For a length equal to bond length which is shown here. This is the bond length or the development length LD which can be calculated by considering the following equation. That equation is here given in the code as sigma s into phi by 4 tau bd, where sigma s is the stress in steel that is equal to 0.87 Fy under the ultimate condition. The code says that in tension at least one third of the bar should be extended into the support in case of simply supported beam and in case of continuous beam at least one fourth should be continued. And to check the anchorage 
how much length should be taken into the support we use this equation bending moment divided by shear force plus L naught which is L naught is the length in the support. So, this if it satisfies the development length then the anchorage is provided. So, the details are given here. Then we decide about the anchoring reinforcement bars based on the clause 26.2.2 of the code. We generally provide a hook like this a U type hook in mild steel and are at 90 degree bend in deformed bars. The details are shown here. The details will be worked out in the next chapter, which will be starting from tomorrow by my colleague Dr. G. Sarangapani will tell you the detail in the design of the beams. So, let us look at the salient points. The deformed bars may not need any anchorage development length because the ribs which we provide will take care of the bond, but hook should be provided for mild steel bars. So, I in the previous uh, slide I showed you what should be the standard hooks. Table 67 in page probably 28 of SP 16 gives you this value of the hook. Bars in compression, the anchorage length of straight compression bars shall be provided. So, with this we conclude before that let us have a look at what we have studied today. I showed you the numerical problem on shear strength and I told you about the torsion and the reinforcement in the form of longitudinal bars are and stirrups are provided in torsion and I gave you the equation for calculation of the stirrup spacing and also I have given you what is bond and anchorage length. I have not done detail because the calculation will be done in the design later by my colleagues. So, with this I leave this class and uh, this is my last class. I hope all of you have enjoyed this classes for the last 8 days. Have a nice day. Goodbye.